Hey and welcome to another tutorial. Today we will continue with drawing spirals inside Microsoft Word using Visual Basic for applications that is using macros. And this is what we have from the last time. We have a nice looking spiral where it grows linearly from the center. Today we will try to do something different and that will be this one. This is what is called the golden spiral and this is the uh, logarithmic spiral. You can see it's kind of growing when it goes outside. It has a very natural feel and it obviously it must be much better if you use something like this in your design. So before we do that, let's talk about what we use to draw those spirals. Let's, let's talk about the polar coordinates because that's the essential thing to do or understand. So usually when we talk about drawing something in Microsoft Word, we are drawing it on the X and Y position, but we can actually specify the point inside a space in a different way. We can say that the point has a certain distance from the origin which will be the r as a radius and certain angle which will be the theta now we cannot tell word to draw a point on this position r and theta we have to first convert it from polar coordinates into cartesian coordinates that is to x and y value and we will do this by saying that the x equals r times cosine the angle and y equals r times sine the angle now previously we were setting the uh, radius the r to be based on the angle that will be r times the angle so in the beginning it was in the center on the position zero zero and then we when we increase the angle we are increasing the r value so we are drawing a spiral like this this time we will do something different instead of just multiplying it we will use the r as the exponent so we will raise some number to the r that will cause the r to quickly go to some higher values when the angle increases. So let's try to do it. Let's try to delete everything. I'll open our macro, open the developer even, open our macro to draw the spiral. And you can see it's fairly simple macro where I have the seg number of segments. I may probably raise it to even higher number. And I'm using this as a size of the polypoints array, which is used to store all the points. I have the radius, the angle. I also have the spins from the last time, which says how many times I will spin around the circle. So I will locate the code to set the radius, which is in here. It says radius is angle times five. Instead of saying radius is angle times five, I will say radius is some value raised uh, to the radius, to the angle. So for example, 1.1 raised to the angle. If I do it like this, you will see that the spiral should be, if I resize it, it should be like exploding when it goes outside. Now, if I quickly look at the Wikipedia for golden spiral, there is actually a value which I should use to get the golden spiral. It's down here. We are measuring the angle in the radians, so we have to use this value 1.3584. So I will try to use this value 1.3584. 56. So if I use this number, what I should get would be a, like a golden spiral. So I delete everything, I run this macro again, and I'm getting this what's called a golden spiral with the golden ratio. You can see it kind of explodes very quickly, it goes outside the document. I should probably maybe change the number of spins to some small number because when we have a shape like this which goes outside of the document, it's quite hard to work with those shapes, you know, resize it or rotate it. So this is like a golden spiral, which is very nice looking spiral. It looks nice when you put it on your design. It may be exploding, you know, too much. So you may want to use a different spiral with maybe a little bit smaller number. So instead of setting it to 1.35, I may as well set it to maybe 1.2 or so. If I try it one more time, one point, maybe two instead. And maybe I will change number of spins to four. So if I run this again, I'm getting different spiral which is not exploding too much you know it's it's staying around the in our center for a longer time kind of like the spiral as well now if you want the spiral to go the other way around all you need to do is to take a look how those x and y positions are being calculated we are actually using sinus function for the x and cosine for y maybe if i just change the cosine to be not minus cosine that may flip something seems like it did so it flipped the axis, so it's actually going counterclockwise. Previously, it was going clockwise. And that's it for 
today's tutorial. Thanks for watching and hope you had some fun with drawing spirals inside board. Talk to you soon.